Awesome. Well, thanks, everyone. so much everyone we're doing all original music for you guys tonight this next one's kind of a newer there's so we got a couple of new ones coming up Discoloration that's taken over my body it tastes very bitter. 
It's a killer And it wants all of me Am I turning white? Disbelief Inside the gray now in the middle Dark tins, fog, it's the worst part I can't make a thing out And I know now that it's gold Just a part, part of the fallout Part of what I knew Would happen anyway And maybe it's okay I've been told It's early. We're really excited to be here and, and very honored to be on, on such an awesome festival and want to thank Lincoln Calling and the whole staff for all their hard work in putting this on. Time. I was too much to handle That's when I started losing my mind It was just like a movie You don't want it to end When the credits start rolling You wanna know 
watch it all over again I think I know what you meant When you said I don't know how to live Without love In my love Without Plan for the last time The just all came out The truth spread inside me Crawling up and out of my mouth It didn't end with a question Not a doubt in my mind Just a staring feeling and I leave all this behind
It's time to forget All the tricks I learned That I fine-tuned To make it work It's time to let it go All the habits formed When I was sitting in the back seat Watching life happen to me Never mind This is our first show as this as this lineup here, so so it's an honor to be here. This is really fun. Hope everyone's enjoying themselves. So, thanks for listening. Turn. You coming around Making my peace Finding a sound Working through guilt For moving forward While my heart spills over Just to spit me out Already spit me out Oh, spit me out Spit me out Oh, spit me out What a winter we had Nearly froze us out 
killed all the blue And it surely killed my doubt Never felt more sure of myself I could finally say it to move Three more left. If you guys want any CDs or T-shirts or anything, we got merch with us. It's over at the merch tent, so maybe we'll see you over there.
got one more song left for you. Once again, we're Katie Gein and The Drive uh, from Kansas City. And it's so good to be here. Thanks for listening. I want to introduce the band really quick before we get out. This is Claire Adams on the bass guitar. Cat King on keys and guitar. Yes. Stephanie Williams on the drums. And my name is Katie Gian. And also, these, these two lovely ladies have their own solo albums out. You should look them up. They're awesome. And uh, yeah, this is our last tune. This is a brand new one. It's called Battles. It's about getting through the pandemic. <laughs>
Thank you guys so much for Kitty Gein and the Drive. We really appreciate you listening. Have fun. Identity. I mean, that's just what I have to offer. You know, like I. My name is Sophia Rupert. I am an artist and sculptor currently living in Lincoln, Nebraska. I was born and raised in central Illinois. I moved to Lincoln for grad school in the summer of 2017. And I applied all over the country and got into places all over the country. Um, but Lincoln seemed pretty special to me. Uh, I do have a family history here. Uh, my great-grandparents lived in western Nebraska in the small town of Big Springs. Um, and I think there are about 450 people there. But I spent every summer growing up, I think I spent 18 summers in Big Springs, Nebraska. So I had a personal connection to Nebraska. Um, and so it felt like I had a personal connection to Lincoln. So when I visited the program, I was greeted by just an amazing display of an art community, not only within the university, but within the community itself. Um, I saw and visited so many wonderful galleries. There are um, a lot of really great community art centers. Um, and then just being, being greeted by sculpture on so many city corners um, and in plazas, it was, it was really inspiring for me to see a place that I had such a, a, a personal connection with, um, seeing it thrive artistically um, in my, in, and so it was sort of a perfect combination um, of, of history and, and my current career. Um, I since I've stayed here four years, so um, I'm in no hurry to leave. I really love Lincoln. It's been really supportive for me. I found an amazing community of artists, uh, and we we share a lot of the same um, goals and ambitions in our professional career. Um, and being post grad school and having a sustainable um, community to to talk to and engage with and, and and be in conversation about art with has, has been um, just a really amazing thing. Sculpture occupies space differently than I think 2D work typically does. Um, and I've, I've done drawing and painting before, but it's always, it always seems so distant from me. And sculpture is made out of 3D materials and objects and, and things that are like right next to us or, you know, they, they command space um, in, a, in a different way than, than art. Um, being non-functional and having mass, uh, having volume, um, it's really human in a way and I liked that human connection. I select materials that have a human connection. Uh, I typically work with found objects or, or materials that have uh, had a former life. I find that the history in those objects brings a really interesting um, connotations or, or associations and, and really creates a, a human connection between the viewer and the object. I look for a lot of tools, um, a lot of times tools of labor, um, things that might be used on a farm or uh, might aid in a domestic task, um, something that is a, a, an assistant, I guess, through life. Um, so a lot of those objects are steel or metal. Um, and then I also look for soft materials like fel felt or wool or um, clothing that I've dissected and, and reshaped. And so that's a, a persistent dynamic in, in my materials is uh, the hard and the soft. I try not to work on a binary, but I, I find that the fabric tends to be more feminine and, and the tools and the steel tends to be uh, bring more masculine associations. And so I try to dissect those and interweave those and, and dismantle those associations uh, and, and weave a portrait that's, that's a little more fluid. My grandma was a bit of a hoarder. Um, she was a... Um, a product of the Great Depression and so she had a hard time letting things go and, and 
to her, wealth was an accumulation of, of things. And so that, that also is really visible in my practice. Um, a lot of this work reminds me of her and of, of the weird, quirky things she would collect. Um, so, so those ideas of, of rural labor, of defined roles, um, objects that have been collected for no purpose other than to, to have them, uh, that has stayed with me throughout my entire practice and continues, even if the work isn't directly about that, it directly um, impacts my aesthetic and my material sensibilities. These pieces here are actually fragments of an installation that I did. Um, it's a, sort of an ongoing installation. Um, and so these here, I call them my plastic prayer bags. Uh, and so these actually come from a story told by my, my grandmother who was um, a product of the Great Depression. And one of the things that she would do obsessively is collect plastic bags. And I think that's something that a lot of us do. Um, just in our daily lives, go to the store, get a bag, stuff it in another bag, and put it under the sink or in, in, a, in a cabinet or wherever. Um, but I've, I started making these bags because of a story that she told me about um, chasing down a plastic bag in a field. And, and she had a little moment where she prayed and prayed that the bag would come back to her. And, and she claims that once she had said amen, that it, a gust of wind brought it back to her, hit her right in the chest. And, and so she, for her, that, was, that sort of solidified her faith. Um, and so I think about plastic bags and I think about plasticity and um, sort of the nature of faith and how I think that's a plastic in, in nature. Um, and so these are little fragments of that installation. The, the larger installation, were, uh, it was just these bags on a white wall and usually in an oval shape, uh, about eight feet tall, um, typically five feet wide. Um, so these are just little fragments of that these little threads that come off remind me of her hair uh, because she had really long hair. Um, it was down past her bottom, but she would always wear it in this really big cinnamon bun right on the back of her head. So these are sort of a, um, a monument or a, um, a nod to her.
Hey, first. <laughs> it's me, Steady. Who do we got on here? Matt, Bill, Nate. All right. Mike Bauer, trumpet. All right. I think I should play, or this is how this works. There's a huge crowd here, tons of people, 300 people here. It's crazy. So. You'd call sick when I'm leaving Who oh, just thinking about it hurts But I let it take over Cause I know I'll see you again Can you feel it in the air? Ooh, there's a sound it makes. Ooh, can you feel it in the air? Ooh, there's a sound it makes. All too soon Not a chance For a farewell And the odds Stack against us But there will come a day Do Can you feel There's a sound in me And ooh, can you feel it in the air And ooh, there's a sound in me and There's a light that shines next to me and it keeps me company Till I know you're here Till I know you're here Do can you feel it in the air? Do there's a sound in me For one point. All right. Woo! Hey, hey. All right. Cool crowd. Cool crowd. Here we go. Where's Zizi? Oh, no. Oh, shoot. Where's Zizi? That's her dog. Courtney, go get Zizi. Uh, this song's called Battles. Um, probably going to release it next month. Yeah, that sounds good. I'm looking at the screen, but I should probably look here, but I can't look at both. So, all right. Let's do this. It's called Stroke It Gently. I walk through the screen door once again. Oh, baby, I feel like I'm just losing grip. It surely slips. Falling Night. I'm tired of counting sheep to get some sleep. Woe isn't me. But you're no battle. I would want to lose tonight. Will it happen? 
happens every time I speak mm -hmm. well, It happens every time I make a move well, I'm the keys inside the house Maybe it's a sign that I should move out can I pay the rent? Well, is there anybody listening? We're well, curious to see why well, I'm just full of doubt. I think I missed the point. You're no battle. I would want to lose. Every time I speak mm -hmm. well, It happens every time I make a move The distance has no meaning when you're here So come here You're here, so come in. I tripped on my way at the door, and I can't seem to get her off my feet. So it seems to me, well, is there some missing piece, something that fits together so? No battle I would want to lose But you're no battle I would want to lose Tonight Well it happens every I make a All right, who's in the house now? Hello, Breckenridge. Oh, yeah, we were supposed to be in Breckenridge right now for my uh, bachelor party. Um, yeah, this is pretty close to what that was going to be like. So um, here we are, Breckenridge. Uh, party time. <laughs> Why is it hard to live a dream when you're making it look so easy? Why is it hard to live a dream when you're making it look so easy? I know it's hard to be late when I'm closing down the bar. Why is it hard to live a dream when you're making it look so easy? Staring at the ceiling with the lights off Thinking of the time when it went wrong Was I just you? Oh, too in love Why is it hard to live a dream when you're making it look so easy? 
Why is it hard to live a dream when you're making it look so easy? I know it's hard to relate when I'm closing down the bar. Why is it hard to live a dream when you're making it look so easy? And I tell and we have no direction. Well, getting lost at least shows me answer. When all else fails, it gives me hope. Why is it hard? Why is it hard to live a dream when you're making it look so easy? I know it's hard to relate when I'm closing down the bar. Why is it hard to live a dream when you're making it look so easy? And it hurts to me when I hear your name. A place stuck in the past. Oh, but you're so free that you don't realize this town is where you're from. Why is it hard to live a dream when you're making it look so easy? Why is it hard to live a dream when you're making it look so easy? It's hard to relate when I'm closing down the bar. Why is it hard to live a dream when you're making it look so easy? Fun. Uh, thanks, Lincoln Calling, for setting up this uh, streamathon. Um, glad to be a part of it. Um, played Lincoln Calling a good amount of times. Helped out in the past. Uh, it's a great organization. Fun festival. Great bands. <laughs> and uh, yeah. Never do change 
How are we doing, YouTubers? I can read it. Um, yeah. The magic place. Go Suns! Uh, I'll do just a tad bit more of my vocal. Thank you. Um, give it up for uh, BCN. Um, I don't know if I'm giving it up for the people here to cheer or the people on the YouTube, but uh, they do great work. And they're uh, making this happen right now. So thank you so much. And thank you to the Storm Cellar for letting us come here and play some songs. Um, the Buds in Universe Contest are up next. Yay! So stick around because you don't have to go anywhere. Because if you do go somewhere, you're not doing things right. So. Let me read some of these comments. Chris Lager, very nice. All right, Chris Lager, how you doing? The Chris Lager. Oh, you got some, got some fans in, fans in here, Chris. You're the force. You don't want to reckon with. Like the mother, the one you need the most You're the teacher You're the cream of the crop Like the master, the jack of all the trades The
Understand why we can't seem to get it right. Mm -hmm. And we're alone, and we're alone. Who are we kidding? We're the ones to blame. And then we die, it'll happen again. So let's stop now and hold our breath for as long as we can. Teaching me what's right, an open mind for words to come. Word the one. All right, thank you. <clears throat> Whoa, it's glorious. Gotta see this mullet. Got that shot? Oh, yeah. Um. <clears throat> What's the, what's the time? All right. Uh, this is uh, this is my song. This is the last one. Uh, so I better drink these beers real quick. Hundred views. A hundred people watching right now. So I'm a. I, I'm sorry. I just keep forgetting that. Um, I oh yeah. Hey. Uh, cheers to everyone watching. Um, you guys are awesome, and you're probably drinking at home because what else is there to do? Um, so thanks for tuning in. Uh, it's going to be a fun streamathon, and uh, hopefully we don't have to do any of this shit anymore. Um, I can cuss, right? Okay. It is the internet, so sorry. This song's called I Feel Good Again, which is uh, hopefully what we all feel after all this is over, so. Thanks again, I'm Steady Wells, but you probably <laughs> know my name. My real name. Oh, that wasn't like a cocky thing where you should know who I am. I'm just saying you kind of... <laughs> Crashing down, I'm feeling the way There is not much more I can say and Day by day, it's burning me out I never thought it would get this far So I pick at myself, I look in the mirror I write on the wall that I feel good Again, that I feel good Again And I feel good again And I feel, I feel Keep it cool, I'm telling myself We'll get it together, it gets worse And laugh it off and tell all your friends I know that I'm not the only one So I pick at myself, I look in the mirror I write on the wall that I feel good Again, that I feel good Again And I feel good again And I feel, I feel There's nothing stopping me And I'll feel good again 
never hold back what you're feeling. Looking back, I'm seeing it through. I wouldn't be here without you. So I think of myself, I look in the mirror, I write on the wall that I feel good again, that I feel good again, that I feel good again, that I feel good again. And I feel good again. And I feel, I feel. Good. All right, thank you. Ooh, party time. Catherine Weiss. I am an artist and community arts organizer uh, with South Downtown, and I was born and raised in Lincoln. When I was growing up, my mom had like this watercolor Boy Scout handbook that um, showed all these different rocks, and I was really excited about it. So for a while, I wanted to be like an archaeologist and dig up beautiful rocks, but I could never find any in my backyard. So I just started drawing in the like. Boy Scout handbook, all the rocks and stuff. So I think I've always been really attracted to um, images and beauty. And so yeah, I've known since I was like a little kid, I wanted to make art. So I've been painting since I was in sixth grade and I love painting and I was doing acrylic painting, but I didn't know anything about oil paint when I was in high school and like before that. So I was always like using the slow dry medium the last few years of high school. And then in uh, college, I learned about oil painting and it completely changed my life because I was like, oh man, this is what I've been trying to achieve for the past four years. So yeah, I emphasized in printmaking when I was in college, but I've always been painting and I love painting. So I graduated from UNL in 2018, and uh, before that I was running an art space with some friends called Parallel Visions that was like for artists of color, by artists of color, and it was really satisfying. I learned a lot about curating and like storytelling and like working with other people. So like through that experience I started working at South of Downtown um, Community Development Organization because it's like this whole weird kind of long story. Um, but essentially with the money we fundraised to keep Parallel Visions going, we ended up running a program at Park Middle School, which is how I met my current employer. Man, I actually feel really lucky because I've had a ton of mentors and a ton of support. Like both of my parents have been very supportive of my art and both of my parents have like parents who made art too. So they kind of always understood that. And then when I was in high school, I had like a lot of really supportive art teachers but one person who had like a huge impact on my artistic practice that I think about a lot now as an adult is uh, Ben Jones, who was a, like an arts activist and um, he's African American and was doing a lot of critical thinking about the school system. So he came into my high school and was teaching a street art class. And so he taught me stuff about street art. I was already doing graffiti, honestly. So <laughs> um, like a little bit. And so he taught like more about like the history of street art and then I would hang out with him in his studio and like paint and learn a lot of stuff. So he was really cool and he like let me borrow his laptop so I could apply for college. Um, and I joined Upward Bound and so I applied for a bunch of different schools and I definitely wouldn't have been able to go to college without like financial support and scholarships and stuff. So I feel really lucky for having like art teachers and programs that helped me be successful. So I work for South of Downtown Community Development Organization, and it's based in the near South and Everett neighborhoods in two census tracts, the 20.01 and 20.02 census tracts, which are between A and H Street and like 
10th and 17th Street, something like that. And there's 5,500 people that live here, like 94% rental and like high poverty, but also a lot of diversity, a lot of creative people, a lot of culture and a lot of amazing businesses. So what we're trying to do is just improve the quality of life for people that live here, improve opportunities uh, for businesses and entrepreneurs. So I've been organizing mural projects and workshops and looking at how public art can make uh, neighborhoods more walkable. It can improve the perception of safety. It can be a point of neighborhood pride and neighborhood dignity. Um, and it can bring people together to have conversations about their shared values. So that's what I'm doing through South of Downtown as an arts organizer. And oh, I love it so much. <laughs> yeah, if I wasn't like always hungry to make art all the time, I would happily do this for like the rest of my life, pretty much. Um, yeah, and my team is really amazing. We're doing a lot of like housing advocacy, civic engagement work, like using the sidewalks um, to put signs out about voting and uh, census and stuff like that. Uh, our organizer, Christy Yang, started like the Civic Sidewalk series where they're using like temporary spray chalk around the neighborhood and now around the city to like inform people about um, like voter registration and voting dates and stuff. There's the pandemic in 2020 and then there was a bunch of violence towards uh, like black people. And so both of those things happening simultaneously had um, made me start thinking about public space and putting art outside because obviously we can't, can't go in galleries as much or it's not like a safe thing to do during the pandemic. Um, now that things are getting better, I'm hoping that we'll be able to like go to First Fridays again, but that wasn't something I was able to do. And so I was thinking about how can we put art in the public space so that it's actually confronting people and it's not just kind of going into this gallery vortex where only other artistic people will see the work. Because at a certain point, it's like the work I was making, I wanted to confront people who didn't already agree with me about the humanity and the dignity of black people. Like that was something I was thinking about, um, particularly last summer. So I was invited to do like a woodcut, um, like outdoor wheat paste installation with Lux Center for the Arts and Constellation Studios. And so them inviting me to do that just forced me to have like all this public art outside. And I was like, man, this is really cool. I want to keep doing this. So I was, um, after Ahmad Arbery was um, shot like in his neighborhood going for a run last year, I like couldn't stop thinking about it. And I wanted to make an image outside so that people were confronted with like the reality of that. Um, so I made a like a big outdoor eight foot by four foot mural on like a boarded up window at Sandy's. So I think the pandemic has definitely made me think about like public space more. And that's something I'm still really interested in. Um, yeah, woodcuts, especially like printmaking is just made to be proliferated. So like might as well like have people see it who maybe don't care about the things you care about right now, but maybe that art can impact them or help them to think about or process something they may not otherwise have. When it comes to like street signs in this public space, I do think the city has a long way to go to like make things as simple as yard storming easier. Like there's a lot, a lot of red tape on a lot of public art, like light poles, electric poles. There's all these different city entities that, that you would have to ask to like knit around a stop sign. Do you know what I mean? It's heinous. During the pandemic, I worked with my friend and super amazing artist David Manzanares to organize a mural at 11th and G Street on Esquina de los Espanos, which is formerly Klein's Corner. So it went from being like this historic German from Russia corner to now being like this really amazing like series of businesses that are primarily like Mexican American. So after like a long time of asking the landlords and like flyering, be like, hey, can we pay your building? And we'd love to have like a Latinx artist like come and paint this and you wouldn't have to worry about anything. We finally got permission. And then a couple months later, like David came up to us and was like, I really want to make a mural on that building. And I was like, who'd have thought? So um, we had planned it for this year and it was executed last year with like a community fundraiser. And um, he depicted like the loved ones of people on the block who had passed away. And it was honestly kind of a heart-wrenching process because his dad passed away during the middle of making the mural. And so he ended up including like 12 figures because his assistants, like grandmother passed away. And there's just a lot of loss, but having like this art piece depicting these people and then surrounded by like these 
butterflies and like composition flowers and all of this um, just like beautiful Mexican heritage. It made it so it was like a really healing, cathartic piece. And it's just like giant, it's like two stories. And he received so many messages like seeing these butterflies like made my day and I was having a horrible day or um, one of the women who works at Salon Belesa, which is like right next to the mural, her, I believe it was her grandfather had come to like Texas and was trying to get to her in Nebraska, but he passed away. And so like seeing him there just like made her weep and she was like, I feel like he's finally with me after all this time. So it's like those sorts of stories of like, oh yeah, this is why we're doing it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Even thinking about uh, Ben Jones, like he was doing, like I said, a lot of critical thinking about the school system and thinking about the fact he wasn't given the support he needed, but he showed up in the school to be that support for other students. So I think it's people like Ben that are making Lincoln a better place where it's like, especially as an artist of color. Maha, Ipanka, and the Oto Missouria. We encourage you all to get into the land back, water back, medicine back, relatives back movement. Thank you. You can learn more about that at the TP. <laughs> we also want to let all of our relatives out there who are on that red road uh, know that we have sober support relatives here. If you're feeling triggered at all by the alcohol, um, you can come to our little TP, our little home here on the prairie on 14th Street. Come and find someone who has a little button that says sober or sober support and we will stand with you, okay? Thank you all so much for being here. Now let's give a very warm round of applause or maybe a big Lili to Ray Saragoza. Hello, relatives, how are you? It's such an honor to be here. It is my very first time here, my first time to Lincoln Calling, and I'm, I'm so grateful to be here. I'm gonna play some songs and tell some stories, and I hope you enjoy yourselves. Feel free to come even closer, and closer and closer and closer. souls out there tonight, yeah. <laughs> I 
lifted up my head and I walked into the clouds Decided that this moment will never get me down Nobody's gonna stop me now Gonna stop me now When the only thing you left with all your torn and tattered clothes When you find yourself wandering down a dark and lonely road When you've got a feeling in your heart that no one seems to know Feeling like a complete unknown I'm a rebel soul I'm a rebel soul When you find yourself wandering down a dark and lonely road When you've got a feeling in your heart that no one seems to know Feeling like a complete unknown I'm a rebel soul Thank you so much for coming out tonight. It's a beautiful TP. I love it so much. This next song is called Fight Like a Girl. And it's about channeling your feminine energy, no matter your gender. Just channeling that strength of your feminine divine energy and Mother Earth. Like 
like a girl. Oh, I like you guys. You're fun. This is amazing. Every time I get on stage now, because it was like, didn't really play shows for a year and a half. Now I'm on stage and I'm just like, ah, it's so fun. I love it here. I love all of you. This is so fun. <laughs> so many natives in the house tonight. I feel like I can, I love it. So this next song I'm going to play is called The It Girl. And this song I wrote about just embracing having brown skin because it was something I grew up very insecure about. I'm very mixed race. Uh, my dad's Mexican and of Akima Otham, Native American descent. And my mom is from Japan, so I'm half Asian on my mom's side. And so I grew up just feeling like I wasn't enough of anything. But I've realized over the years I am enough. And uh, this song is kind of my take my power back song. And so uh, this is the It Girl. I could tell I was living in a world that was made for brown skinned girls. Just you wait, it'll be your turn. Say to her, I could be the it girl, can you see? I could be the face on the magazine. Paint me like a debut on your prom queen. Pretty little it girl, yeah, that's me. Do you ever feel like everywhere you go? You're just an act in the sideshow Just a friend, a second thought It's time you give them everything you got I could be the it girl, can't you see? I could be the face on the magazine Paint me like a debutante, your prom queen Pretty little it power back and love yourself for who you are everyone Woo. okay so this next song is called run with the wolves it's about returning back to the earth and returning back to your instincts and your intuition and learning about who you really are. Yeah. 
hear them now We used to be so free Get back to who we used to be Leave the ground up to the mountains Feel the air rush through your skin It's the way Couldn't hold us back And then they came and stole our fire Put us in a cage We could never change We used to be so free Get back to who we used to So I wanted to do a little crowd participation song. So you're going to have to come a little closer for this one. Everyone's going to come even closer. I know it's still social distance, but just like a step closer. <laughs> um, so um, I wanted to sing a song in honor of Leo, a community member that we lost. And uh, this song is called um, Driving to Standing Rock. And uh, it's in honor of all the water protectors including Leo. And so uh, this song is going to require some audience participation. So stay tuned for that. And now you're close, so you'll know. Let's get on the road now The snow's coming in and it won't be found Until morning, let's drive through the night If we watch the lines, we'll be alright Sisters sleeping in the back She's got a fever but we can't turn back We had this dream and it's a sign That we gotta stop this pipeline Negative 20 degrees And we 
walk the bridge on the march for peace Your, your time to shine. So I'm gonna say, what do we do when the river is under attack? And you're gonna scream, stand up, fight back. You got it? All right, it goes over a couple times. What do we do when the river is under attack? Stand up, fight back. What do we do when the water is under attack? What do we do when our children are under attack? Yes, that was a good practice round. Now for real this time. What do we do when the river is under attack? What do we do when the water is under attack? What do we do when our children are Thank you for singing with me. So how are y'all doing out there? Good? You ready for a fun night of music? Did you miss live music too? I missed it so much. I missed it so much. All right, well, I'm gonna play one more song about, that I wrote about Standing Rock and uh, fighting for our land and our water. This song is called In the River. And uh, I dedicate it to all of you for being here and for sharing this space with me today. It's all about community, it's all about gathering, and it's about looking out for each other and, uh, and looking out for Mother Earth as well. Almost. for each 
yaşadı We are stronger when we bend together And we're standing up for the water Don't poison the future Texas us all If you treat her with disrespect Then what message have you left For your children and their home In the river is our sisters and our brothers We are stronger when we bend together And we're standing up for the water Don't poison the future away How can you take and take and not appreciate the soil Don't let this black snake Contaminate our drinking water This is for our sons and daughters In the river is our sisters and our brothers We are camping out for each other stronger when we bend together and we're standing up for the water don't poison the future away So again, my name is Ray Saragossa. For any of you who are just meeting me today, it's so nice to meet you. My first time playing here in Lincoln, and it's, it's, it's so wonderful. How are we going to top this next time I come back to town? I don't know. And uh, every, you know, this is my, my second time in Nebraska playing a show. And the first time, I was met with so much love. And I just think you have such a, a wonderful, wonderful just community of really sweet people here. So thank you so much for showing me your kindness. It means a lot. And um, yeah, so this next song is called Warrior. And I, I wrote it about uh, finding your bravery when you're feeling afraid. And I initially wrote it about going on tour and, and playing shows for a bunch of people like yourselves and being really nervous about it. And then, you know, the past year and a half happened, didn't get to tour for a long time, and I realized that being alone is a lot scarier than being in a room with a lot of people. <laughs> and it's a, it was really challenging to go inward and have to spend a lot of time alone after I had been traveling and engaging with people all the time, every, every day of every year for years. And, and it was really scary to have to go inward, and so, now I think this song has brought on a new meaning um, about nerves and sometimes the, the nerves to actually look in the mirror and look at yourself and think about how you can grow. And so uh, in whatever way in your life you're looking for bravery, um, this is for you tonight, and wherever, wherever you need it tonight. So this is Warrior. Spent my summer in a van Saying Augustine to Michigan Held my breath, said a prayer All those people waiting there I've been 
been searching so long It lived in me all along Burn me in the desert and drown me in the rain Throw me to the thunder, push me up Sharing tears, thanking grace for bringing us all here. It ain't lonely on the road when there's love everywhere you go. I've been searching so long, it lived in me all. Thank you so much, everyone. Anyone backstage know what time it is? Time? Nice. Okay, okay, great. I have 10 minutes. We've got time. Woo! Okay, I know a lot of you here, some of you, not a lot, maybe some, some a lot, know of my music. I don't come here that often, so feel free to shout out a song if I haven't played a song you wanted to hear yet. Because the worst is like after the show, and they're like, why didn't you play that song? And I'm like, I'm sorry. Oh my gosh, all right. I said something, so now I gotta do it. This is an older song. Only the hardcore fans out there know. <laughs> this song is called Crazy Eyes. Lips on lips, listening to my hips Back and forth, wanting more Play that record forever and ever Lay me down, round and round and round Soft lips, crazy eyes a twisted lullaby We sigh Comfortably near to me 
never, never, never soft lips, crazy eyes, a twisted lullaby. We sigh, ah ha 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 Joe. <laughs> yeah, Joe. <laughs> I love it. Why oh, keeps doing that? Well, if anyone else wants to scream out a song, I'm gonna keep playing. Let's see. So I'm born and raised in New York City. Anyone ever traveled to that crazy place? Yes. I grew up in the West Village, above a firehouse, next to a pizza place, in a studio apartment with five people. It was something else. <laughs> but I love it, and I miss home all the time. And uh, So this is my song about home. This is called The Ghosts of House and Street. Shadows of who we used to be are haunting me, are haunting me. Our silhouettes on rooftop sheets are following me, are following me. I've traveled the world, but I keep coming right back to our old street, the only home. I've ever had They booted up All those places where we meet So I wave goodbye to the ghosts Of Houston Street Wave goodbye to the ghosts Of Houston Street They've gated all the parks And the bodegas are all gone They took a part of me A part of me all our friends, they packed it up and moved along. It's no mystery, it's ancient history. I travel the world, but I keep coming right back to our old street, the only home I've ever had. They put it up, all those places where we made so I wave goodbye to the ghosts so of Houston Street, wave goodbye to the ghosts of Houston Street. Thank you so much everyone. My name is Ray Saragossa. I think I have time for one more song. This has been such a joy. <laughs> one more. Um, find me on Instagram, R-A-Y-E-Z, 
R-A-Y-E-Z, and then you'll, I'll come up, you'll see me with my hat. Send me a message with purple hearts, and that's how I know we met tonight at Lincoln Calling, and I'll message you back and be like, ah, hi, we're friends now. And uh, come say hi. Uh, at the TP, I have some merch. I have some vinyl and CDs and T-shirts and stuff. And um, my suitcase is 10 pounds too heavy to go on the plane. So we need to sell 10, 10, 10 pounds of merch tonight. So <laughs> don't want to get the oversized fee. Um, OK. Well, anyway, thank you all so much. Again, thank you, Lincoln Calling. Thank you to Spencer and Aaron and, and everyone who came out tonight. And it means so much to me. Keep in touch, and I'll see you next time. Shout out to all my patrons who are here. I have a couple patrons here. <laughs> Check me out on Patreon. Ray said it goes on Patreon, yeah. Save the river, save the seas, save the mother. want and say that we are free if you put oil in the water we won't sit quietly and we were singing stand up stand up what's right don't walk don't walk silently Save the oceans and the trees Save the people who are in need How can you do what you want and say you come in peace? If you don't open your eyes, how can you see? And we were cheering to stay to see you next time. Thank you so much, everyone. If you fight for me, I'll fight for you. Thank you, everyone. Good night. <laughs> I'm gonna get the fuck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, or you can say, like, maybe I can fill that gap. Maybe I can like be a resource for other people that need this. Thing. So I see a lot of people that are doing and like filling gaps and trying to be a resource for other people. Um, yeah, a lot more like representation than I did when I was up in art. Scene. Of course, maybe I wasn't aware of it, but yeah, I definitely think they're important in growing support here for artists and for creative people. Um, I still think we have a lot of work to do to have significant resources, but we're definitely moving in a positive direction. I have two shows in 2022. One is at Key Fine Art, which is on like 14th and O, and that's where I'll be displaying like a huge body of work I've been planning on for like 
more like two years or something, um, depicting like African American people here in Nebraska and the different like identities that exist here, like black people who are adopted by people and multiracial black people and like these sort of in-between experiences. Um, and then in February 2020, I have a solo show at Lux Center for Arts and I think like the East Story, it's a smaller gallery and I'm showing work um, about Charles Chestnut, who was like an early African-American writer who spent half of his career passing as white. So I'm working with uh, the university on like the archive of work. So I'll be showing the pieces that I make for them. I'm glad we I'm glad we're doing this. Thanks for having us. Here's a song about the summer vibes. And those carefree days that we all deserve again. Go ahead and click a stop screen. Oh, 
some of ours Just like we had When we were younger Just like we had Last summer Just like It's the vote that you Some of us. Let's do it. This song right here is called Hearts Collide. I'm excited to be here, man. Hope y'all feeling good. Oh, yeah. Let's go.
Our name's Freak About, we're from right here in Lincoln, Nebraska. Thanks to Lincoln Colin for having us out. Hope you're having a good time at home, drinking a bunch, and just having a good time. Okay, let's get going.
Feeling out there tonight. It's great to be here with you. Thank you all so much. We'll do a little Jimmy Reed for you right now.
Sorry about this. <laughs> Anyways, we got my son Evan Nudgy laying it down over there on the guitar for you tonight. <laughs> Our bro from back home, Justin Canoria laying it down on the bass for you tonight. And our new found brother back there on the drums, Tyler Smith, laying it down on the drums back there for you. Some muddy waters for you. Thank you. 
still such as mine Still such as mine She's all right, she's all right She's all right, she's all right Give them all of my money Tell me what more Can I do Well I really don't believe it baby She gon' give it to you She gon' give it to you She's all right, she's all right She's all right, she's all right She's all right, she's all right all right. Come on!
How's everybody doing out there?
All right, once again, really great to be here with you tonight. Thank you all for uh, hanging with us, and it's a pleasure hanging with you all tonight. Thank you so much. And it's a beautiful night.
my train Hear my train a
Once again, that's my son over there, Evan Naji on the guitar. Justin Kenoya here on the bass. Brother Tyler Smith back there smacking it on the drums. Myself, Mato Naji, great to be here with you tonight. And uh, I think we've got time for one more here. We're going to do, it's called Next Door Neighbor Blues. One of my favorites. Next door neighbor blues. so much. Thank you all so much. We'll see you again. All right. Good night.
Hejale. May you have Hejale in your life. And may you spread Hejale to others. And may you also receive Hejale. Now, this song that I'm going to do for you now is called The Storm on the Red Spot of Jupiter. This song came about when one day I was gallivanting. I wasn't gallivanting, but I got to visit the Lowell Observatory in Flagstaff, Arizona. And it was there that I stumbled upon the magnificent find that that was where they discovered Pluto. It was wonderful. But as I was there, I got the wonderful opportunity to look through a telescope. Pew! That showed me the magnificent red spot on Jupiter. And this telescope was not just any telescope. I'm telling you, like astronauts that were on the Apollo missions looked through this telescope. I'm talking about Carl Sagan looked through this telescope. My eye touched Carl Sagan's eye. I'm just kidding. Anyway, so this is Storm on the Red Spot of Jupiter. And this is if we were in space and we were approaching Jupiter. Maybe what it would sound like. <laughs>
Yay. That was Storm on the Red Spot of Jupiter. Yay. Now, this next one that I'm going to do for you. This one, um, how do I describe it? I'm... This one... I'll just explain it later. Sorry about that. Um, welcome to 
LC TV. We're in our first premiere event here tonight. And uh, we just want to say thank you so much for tuning in. And um, if you feel so kind to show some love towards Adam tonight, feel free to do so. You can go ahead and check out the little heart icon above the chat uh, box there and just tap that and you'll be able to tip Adam, show your love. Spence, you want to talk a little bit about the sidebar and what folks can kind of check out there? Yeah, totally. I, that's one of the more fun parts about LCTV is the sidebar. It really takes it to the next level as far as the interactivity. Um, you know, feel free to jump in there and chat. Let everybody know how you're doing. Uh, send Adam some love in the chat. Um, jump on Twitter. Use the hashtag Lincoln Calling TV to get your tweet featured. Uh, you can also see what's coming up next. We've got some amazing bands lined up for March. Um, lots of cool things. Our artist directory, um, we're going to have this really cool little small business, um, our local small business sponsors featured here. But I think the most important thing is to go to that heart uh, and make sure you give Adam some love tonight. Um, man, I've already got goosebumps. I miss you so much, Adam. I want to give you a big hug. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for everybody that's tuning in tonight. Uh, this is great. Let's, let's take it back to Studio PH and uh, carry on with the next round of music by Adam Soul Music. Yay, and we're back. So, for those of y'all who are at home, and for those of y'all drinking tea, I wonder what kind of tea you're drinking. If it were me, I think I'd be drinking like a oolong or something like that. Hmm. Or jasmine. Okay. Um, this song is called They Say.
They say that a bridge over troubled water is better than a bridge. is broken This song is going to be about flowers. spring will be something that's so beautiful and will allow us to make songs that we can sing. Beautiful songs that we can sing. Beautiful songs worth remembering. Beautiful songs that we can sing in the spring. So there's a philosopher by the name of Bob Ross, and he says, when we make mistakes, we don't make mistakes, we just make happy little trees. And that's kind of what this song turned out to be. So let this be a lesson that whatever you got going on in your life, little mistakes can be turned into beautiful little trees or flowers that blossom during the spring. Yeah. This is the end of this Bob Ross piece. <laughs> if I could name this piece, I'd call it Bob Ross. <laughs> oh my goodness. So I've got one little one for you that I'm going to do. And this is with a little shaker. And this one, this one, you could find in many different countries in Africa. But this one in Ghana is called Kas Kas Kashkash or Asulata. And it's called an Asulata, Kashkash or Kashkash, because it's got this, it's got this sound right here. And this sound, I mean, there's so much you can do with it, right? So, when we put it around the hand, we can do something cool like that. Or sometimes we can just hold it like this. La da 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 
So this song that I'm going to do for you is kind of like a little, um, is it a nursery rhyme? No, it's not a nursery rhyme, but it's a song that little kids would sing back in Ghana. And it's um, talking about cocoa. And cocoa is considered porridge. And so this song is saying, everybody, come grab your bowls. Come, let's eat some porridge. And let's just have some fun. So when I say everybody, you can clap every time I say everybody. Or you could just listen along. Everybody, everybody, bring your calabashi. Bring your calabashi, more fam, more kitchen, never. Where I want to cook, 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 where I want to cook. Everybody, everybody, bring your calabashi, bring your calabashi, more fam, more kitchen, never. Where I want to cook. Okay, so I, now you've heard it, maybe you can clap along. And clapping along can sound like this. Everybody, everybody, bring your calabashi, bring your calabashi, more fiamo que chenia ba, why I want to coco, 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 why I want to coco. Everybody, everybody, bring your calabashi, bring your calabashi, mocha moke chenyapa, why I wanna coco. So I just wanted to share a little piece of that with you. This is a song that my mother would sing back in Ghana. This is a song that my grandmother would sing back in Ghana. And so um I just wanted to share that with you. Thank you. Yeah, I don't know if we're going to do a little break again. No, yes, yes, no. Okay, maybe. Hey, everybody. I hope you're liking the show. So I wanted to share that one because um, my grandmother just passed um, this weekend. She transitioned, and so um, I wanted to do something that would honor her. Um, and I just felt like that was something that would be really pretty um, to share. Yay. <laughs> okay, so this next one that I'm going to do for you is one that I absolutely just love to spend time with and play. And so I hope that you're able to just sit back, relax, and enjoy this too. <laughs>
train tracks I told you we live to be just fine I'm watching the beam tongues grow into blue Dreaming what life would be like soon Holding our hands up to the moon I swear I saw A glimpse of every face I've ever known Their lips were spilling words I've never spoken Nine white horses riding through the county This old stone well shall never, ever drop Passing through by night and day City to city, each country by train Rolling hills and sweeping lanes I'm telling you lie for every chance you can get Throw away your gold if it makes her upset Holding her hands up to the moon She swore she saw A glimpse of every face of it Spilling words I've never spoken Nine white horses riding through the county line Reminding me to never say goodbye They saw someone shall never, ever try Professor Emeritus from the University of Nebraska-Lincoln and uh, the owner and artist of Constellation Studios in Lincoln, Nebraska. Constellation Studios is located in downtown Lincoln on the eastern edge of downtown at 21st and O Street. So it's a very visible location. It has uh, a neighborhood that is in transition. Um, residential and new buildings are being built all around. Uh, old buildings are being taken down just last week, something disappeared. It's also beside uh, urban redevelopment for the Antelope Park 
and the creek has the bike trails and cafe and fountains and outdoor sculpture. So it's really in a good location and I like what's happening and it's going to be very interesting to see all this new development in the neighborhood. Constellation Studios is uh, my artist-owned business uh, that I established eight years ago as a community art center uh, where we specialize in printmaking, book arts, and paper arts. And uh, I have a lot of printmaking equipment and I want to share it with other artists. So that's the model, it is a collaborative print studio where other artists come in and work along with me or on their own independent projects. I can operate here with workshops and artists join from the community uh, to work on their own projects. And printmaking requires a lot of equipment, like I, I was saying, so <laughs> uh, it's not something everybody has on their own, but I've accumulated presses and specialty equipment for many years in my profession as a art professor, having studios on campus and at home, and now all the equipment is in one place here, and uh, I want other people to take advantage of this big asset. It's a community asset because it's permanent, the equipment uh, doesn't go out of date. In fact, they're very old. <laughs> some of the presses are I've had for years and some are of about uh, you know, 75 years old. So uh, it's a way to preserve technical information and uh, knowledge and skill and pass it on to the next generation is my intention. I thought of this idea for many, many years. Uh, I have, of course, had my position at the university as a professor, and I had many opportunities to go as a visiting artist to art centers and universities all over the country, all over the world, in fact. Wonderful opportunities to go and teach and enrich other people's communities. I taught people there and saw their community engaged with printmaking and the kind of excitement that happens with working collaboratively together and I didn't see that happening in Lincoln yet. So all along I thought somebody's got to start that and I've been waiting and waiting and nobody has so uh, it kind of became my future plan for when I retired from the formal position at the university to having uh, my own studio where I can foster the next generation and actually provide the transitional space that can happen once my students were out of school, then here's a place to continue to operate as an artist and I can enrich my own community instead of always going off and helping other people. So I want to bring it home and make that happen here. It's going to take some time. It's still growing. Uh, there's still visions of this being bustling and busy but also the pace that it's at right now is manageable by me. <laughs> There's uh, only a part-time uh, assistant who helps me, but uh, kind of a small business model run by the owner and encouraging other artists to join me in this idea. I started doing printmaking, had my first experience even in high school. And that little bit of experience was exotic to me. It was really interesting. And um, I really enjoyed doing the linoleum block and a wood block and a screen print at that time. And then I must have gotten good feedback <laughs> because then it made me want to do more when I came to the university. So uh, I felt that printmaking was the right area for me. Somehow it just seemed more interesting and different uh, than going with the herd of everybody else wanting to do painting or sculpture or photography. Those actually attract a lot more people and printmaking always had a smaller group. And then the group uh, worked together even if you didn't talk there were people all around you and you felt like you were part of something you learned just by watching or seeing the 
uh, the projects and the experiments and the failures from all those around you. And I was still, I'm kind of a quiet person, so having this opportunity to be part of a community uh, that is the nature of the collaborative experience in a print shop, it just suited me. As a teacher, then I'm trying to instill some of that understanding and interest in my students and of course it caused me to do more research and to contextualize why make prints which is ultimately part of the question that everybody always asks it's hard to do it takes time and it's not immediate so everybody needs to have some justification for why we're going through this angst of <laughs> making the print and the cost and the time and and uh, and I have some pretty good arguments for why it meant something to me. I learned all the time. I learned about what it is I really wanted to do, and I saw amazing effects that you can't get any other way. Constellation has done a number of public art projects. Um, and last summer we did one that was actually really successful and fun to do. We invited nine artists to create a black and white woodblock print and we printed the prints here, and then they were all wheat pasted around town in 10 uh, or nine different locations to create a public mural, in effect, from these nine prints. Well, the prints were all very different, but they were united by the black and white graphic nature of the woodcut. Very powerful, uh, some were so wonderfully cut, and some were uh, with lots of interesting nuances, and. Uh, it turned out to be a really eye-opening experience for the nine artists and then out in the community people could go to the different venues and see uh, the different ways it was installed. Uh, my wheat pasted public art is falling off the wall now. They weathered over the winter and spring and they're blowing away in the wind. <laughs> On a national and international level, the printmaking community is very connected. Uh, we call it a, you know, there's a family tree that people can all start tracing themselves through who their teachers were, who were their influences, where did they take a workshop somehow, and that created a, a connection. Uh, and I love that about printmaking. So. I can contact people from all over and then it puts uh, other connections. So I think it's actually really healthy and large out there. Thousands of printmakers. Nobody's done a count. <laughs> and the, the actual reason why Constellation Studios is called that is because of the metaphor of the network. And it's actually uh, very wide and large, as large as a constellation in the sky, but it's not physically connected, it's, it's conceptually connected. And uh, I like that idea that I have this network that I've established from my years of, of my profession, and I can bring that connection here even if it's not physical. People are knowing about what I'm doing here.
So my name's Larry Buller. I live in Lincoln, Nebraska. I have a studio practice here in Lincoln and I do different kinds of teaching gigs and other assorted jobs. I'm a frequent Terry Gross podcast listener when I'm in the studio and it's just a great way you know, a lot of what I do as a ceramicist doesn't necessarily require a creative thought at that moment. So I can distract myself by listening to something interesting. Uh, when I'm applying decals to my finished work, that can take hours. And it's not all that terribly, you know, I don't need to think about it that much. The design process for me is somewhat intuitive with a lot of what I do. And sometimes that can work in my favor, and then other times I think that might be a problem. Sometimes it just seemed like such a good idea, and I went with it, and it fell flat. But I also think that it's really important as you're working to kind of have that combination of intuition, but also kind of reflective making and kind of deliberateness to what you're doing. You know, and I think that's what grad school did for me. It's like there's little grad professors on my shoulder questioning me the whole time. So it's something that I always kind of try and keep in mind when I'm making. When I was doing my undergrad years and years and years ago at UNL, I was really fascinated by screen printing. I mean, and now that I think back on it, I mean, that was kind of the heyday of Andy Warhol. Uh, and I was seeing a lot of imagery like that. And I really loved very pop artist kind of media driven imagery uh, and so I think it was just kind of like a natural fit um, and I also I love process so again printmaking had all the tools and the process and the you know I always have been drawn to things that require equipment that's why I've never I mean even though I'd love to be a painter it's too it's just like paint canvas where's all the process clay what I love is that there's a making stage of the wet clay, then there's the firing stage of the clay, then there's the glazing stage of the clay, then there's the decal, and then there's the gold luster, and then, you know, and so I guess I just find process to be kind of somehow satisfying in general. What I continue and have always loved about clay is just the property that it can become anything. <laughs> it can just become anything you want it to become almost. And it's, um, I mean, I know that's obvious that it's malleable and that, you know, there's all of these ways to manipulate it. But I would say the other part of that coin for me is the history of clay. Unlike textile where most of it has, um, deteriorated or wood or other craft media, clay has endured and it survived, you know? And so there's always that inspiration of like going to a museum and being inspired by clay that looks like, you know, that was maybe made like 2000 years ago that looks just incredible, <laughs> you know? And the other thing too, in terms of my work is I can use that history in all sorts of ways. I mean, this is very formal, kind of Rococo inspired, you know, very kind of fussy, but I know a lot of clay artists that borrow from everything. When I was a little kid, my very unfussy, straightforward grandmother, who was not a warm, fuzzy person, had a collection of the most frilly teacups that she collected from who knows where, thrift stores, maybe people gave them to her. But they were in her house and they were so out of place. And yet she would have her friends over and they would break out this finery. And they were totally kitschy. But as a kid, I loved them. They were like, they had images of the Orient or of Turkey or far off lands, you know, it's just like weird stuff. And, um, and I think about that and about all the times I go to, into, into places and I see ceramics that are just so, um, I mean, that's the word I use, I guess, is this lowbrow kind of kitschy thing. You know, they're, they're kind of masquerading as something that's a lot more grand. Or they're borrowing from the history of ceramics, but in a totally weird way. We're always surrounded by clay 
you know, from the time we're born to the time we die. And everybody can relate to it, you know, because they've used it, been with it. I love stuff that has a history. I love stuff from the turn of the century that is fraternal, like from fraternal lodges. Um, I find the idea that men gathered in that time period, wore funny costumes, did weird little hand signals, and had this fraternal kind of adult club. I create my own stories around it, you know, in a way. And I love collecting the objects. When I first started making work, you know, and again, this was with Eddie Dominguez years ago, I think Eddie just encouraged us to go deep. It's like a writer writing about what they know, right? And if you're an artist, you have to kind of go with what you know. Like, I don't know anything about a lot of stuff. I do know what it's like to grow up gay in 1970 and 80, you know? And I do know what it's like to live a life that is on the margins and marginalized and different than other people. And I know what it's like to be part of a subculture. You know, and so I was like, okay, well, you know, being gay does not completely define me, but it does, it, it is what I have to say. You know, it's my, it's um, work about sexuality, fetish, um, identity. I mean, that's just what I have to offer. You know, like I can't make a good mug. Not, nothing against people that make good mugs, but I'm just not gonna ever make a great mug. Because it's not my interest, you know, it's not my content. And so I started to really hone in on the idea of, of that. Um, and like, what is it about my experiences as a gay man who came of age so young when it was still really, I mean, I'm not sure how it is now, but you know, back then it was like, very much a subculture. You were living underground in a lot of ways. Um, at any rate, um, and so I just centered on that as kind of like um, what my voice would be, you know? And um, I think the thing about, I think the way that it ended up becoming sexualized has a lot to do with the fact that so many people are still just hung up on the idea of sexuality and sexual expression and any kind of sexual expression that doesn't fit their idea of what the norm is. I mean, if you look at our political climate um, and the fact of what's going on with all these trans bans for this and that, it's like, it's still so prevalent in our society. People cannot wrap their head around difference. And then when it comes to sexuality, it's like, even on steroids, it's even exacerbated beyond. There's something about sexuality. So for me to just kind of blatantly put this out there in like, sometimes it's like sexual toys, but sometimes it's other kind of manifestations. But for me to kind of put this out there in that way, I feel will hopefully kind of like create some dialogue and get people to start thinking that maybe gay sexuality or maybe sexuality isn't really that scary. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> and that, you know, so I don't know. I have struggled with that question about like, why am I doing this, you know? And I have a, I have a pretty good idea. And I, I would say, um, and I would say it centers around, um, in a way, kind of being,